No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, the co-producer of Good News Today, sitting in for Jim for the next several weeks. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of our program. As always, I want to tell you what's coming our way on today's program. Of course, we'll begin our devo with our devotional time, as we always do. That consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of our scripture passage. Today, we go into the Old Testament to the book of Lamentations, where God's faithfulness is truly good news to those who are going through some very difficult times. So get your Bibles if you don't have them already and open them to Lamentations chapter 3 and we'll begin with verse 22 in just a moment. Following our devotional time, Roger Campbell will be with us for another Be Ready Always segment where Roger will address the subject of taking the Lord's name in vain. After that, Freddie Clayton will take us walking and talking about following on the right path. Then we'll have a Bible question for Guyton Montgomery and Troy Spradlin. This week's question relates to John 3, 5 and the second birth. They'll be answering that question as they always do, straight from the Word of God. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Let's read together from Lamentations chapter 3, beginning with verse number 22. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The book of Lamentations contains Jeremiah's inspired weeping and sorrow over the destruction of Jerusalem. Lamentations is a very sad book as, as he reflects on the sin and what's happened to the people uh, there in Judah as the Babylonians are carrying the city off into captivity. But right in the middle of this book, we have the passage that serves as the basis of our text for today this glimmer of hope that focuses on 
uh, the Lord's mercies and his steadfast love, his unfailing covenant love that he has with us. You know, as we go through difficult times, sometimes it's difficult for us to see God's faithfulness when your whole life seems like it's being uprooted and challenged. This passage here in Lamentations really helps to remind us that His covenant love is always there. No matter how difficult the world and life and our experiences may seem to be at a point in time, He's always faithful. You know, this idea of a covenant is something that we don't always talk about. A covenant is an agreement that binds two parties together. Uh, marriage is referred to as a covenant, where, where a man and a woman join together till death do us part. And, and that's going to keep them together in a special relationship for that entire period of time. When it comes to covenants with God, he's always going to keep his side of the agreement. And we see that as we go through the Old Testament, he's shown that time and time again, God is going to fulfill his side of the agreement. And that provides a reasonable basis for us to trust him. What agreement is he obeying here? Well, back in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27 and 28, we have the blessings and the curses that are declared to this nation of people uh, as they are assembled there by Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. And in chapter 27, God promised curses for their disobedience. Chapter 28, he promised them blessings for their obedience and then followed that up with more consequences if indeed they disobey. And the situation that Jeremiah is lamenting in the book of Lamentations is based upon one of these curses, specifically Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36, where he says, The Lord will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. He was promising them that Babylonian captivity if they were not faithful to him. You see, the Lord is always faithful to his promises. When we like them, and even like this, when we don't like them, God is always faithful. And it seems that when we're going through difficulties in life, that reminder shines so brightly like this passage does in the book of Lamentations. God's mercies never come to an end. He's never, ever going to fail us. And that is good news for us today. Well, that ends our devotional segment. And now we'll have Roger Campbell, uh, who will give us uh, a Be Ready Always segment dealing with the subject of taking the Lord's name in vain. As Christians, we're given the responsibility to be ready to give a defense or give an answer. 1 Peter 3 and verse number 15. Most Bible students are very familiar with the instruction God gave Israel at Mount Sinai, part of the Ten Commandments. The instruction was, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We read that in Exodus 20 and verse number 7. What does that even mean? And if a person used God's name in vain today, could they ever be forgiven? How would you answer that question? When you and I study the scriptures, we learn in a hurry that God the Creator wants humans to respect Him. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 10 that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is a healthy respect or reverence for him. The psalmist said to God, holy and reverend or holy and awesome is your name. Psalm 111 verse number 9. God wants us to speak respectfully about him and speak respectfully to him. To take God's name in vain would be to use his name carelessly. 
to use his name flippantly or without respect. Let's consider them th some things that would constitute taking God's name in vain. We read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, that there are some activities that no saint of God should ever participate in those activities. And one of the things that Paul mentions is foolish talking or jesting, coarse jesting. You know, when people tell a joke, and they use God. It might be God the Father. It might be God the Son. It might be the Holy Spirit. When people tell a joke and they use the Godhead's name disrespectfully, that would be taking God's name in vain. When people approach God in prayer and do so with a flippant attitude of like, oh, daddy, old chum, old buddy, that's not the type of attitude God wants us to have as we approach Him. Now, we don't have the, those exact words. In the New Covenant, we don't have the exact words, don't take God's name in vain. But in the New Covenant, in Matthew chapter 6, and verse number 9, we have Jesus' instruction. As we approach God in prayer, we ought to speak like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. A respect, a deep reverence when we speak about God and when we speak to God. One would be taking God's name in vain if he blasphemed God's name. In fact, under the Old Covenant, according to Leviticus 24 and verse 16, blaspheming the name of Jehovah, you remember what the penalty was? It was the death penalty. You know, in modern times, it's so common to hear people throwing God's name out. They, they drop something on the floor and they throw God's name out. They're watching a sporting event on television and something happens that's not to their liking, they throw God's name out. They're driving their car and another driver does something and, and they throw out God's name. They're not using it respectfully. They're using it carelessly. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 26 that if a man thinks he's religious but he doesn't bridle his tongue, his religion is in vain. Now, is it possible under any circumstance for a human being to say the word O, oh, and then the word my, and then the word God, and say it in that order. In other words, is it possible under any circumstance to say, O oh, my God, and to do so respectfully? And the answer is yes. In fact, in Psalm 25 and verse 2, we have words which are the basis of a modern-day spiritual song. In Psalm 25 and verse 2, we read the psalmist saying, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies have power over me. So using God's name in that way, it's appropriate. But to use God's name in a flippant, careless way, it's not right. Can a person be forgiven? Sure. A person who's never been saved, they can repent and be baptized for remission of sins. Acts 2.38, or a child of God can repent of their sins and make confession. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 9. I'm Roger Campbell, and this has been Be Ready Always. Thank you, Roger, for that excellent segment. We really do need to watch our speech. Uh, James and James chapter 3 begins that chapter with many warnings about watching our tongue. In just a moment, Freddie Clayton will be with us walking and talking. But before that, we're going to take a brief break. If you'd like to get your pencil and paper ready to write down our address, we'd love to offer you a correspondence course or allow you to ask us some questions. So write down this address, and we'll be right back. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O.
P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. Again, that's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. That's goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. Or call us toll free at 1 877 384 7221. That's 1 877 384 7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our audience is always good news to us. Staying in touch with our viewers is always good news to us. And you can keep up with us on our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook. We also have two podcasts that are available. Look for Good News Today Daily Devotional, or we have the Good News Today Weekly Edition. Both those podcasts come out and are available anywhere you get your podcasts. We also have apps available for most devices, and we have our own channel on truth.fm. You can always go to the website, gnttv.org. And now, Freddie Clayton's going to join us for just a moment as we talk through Proverbs chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Welcome. Consider with the words of Proverbs chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. When do you think would be a best time to consider the road that you are traveling? Well, obviously, the best time to ponder, to duly consider any path, is not at the end, nor even at the, the middle, but at the beginning of it. The right place for weighing the worth of any course of travel is on this side of the beginning. Further, Listening to the Lord himself, as recorded in John chapter 12, verse 48, he who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judge him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Certainly, it is by the word of God that paths and actions will be weighed in the judgment, right? Therefore, by the word of God, paths and actions, great or small, should be contemplated, properly thought about before beginning the journey. In Jeremiah chapter 10, at verse 23, we read, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Mankind is now and always has been in need of divine help, wisdom from above. Also recognize that not only has man needed help, guidance, instruction from God, man has always had that assistance available through God's inspired word. Man has never been without God's revealed will available. Sadly, most of the time, man refuses to seek and follow God's guidance. This particular proverb warns about the ditches of extreme on both sides of the road, either to the right or the left side of truth. In a similar way, we read of Joshua being encouraged as he takes Moses' place as Israel's leader in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then will you will you make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Friends and brethren, if you were to attempt to provide clear instruction as to how to travel through life, avoiding extremes, and the promise of success as God defines success, could you do any better than these words? Obviously not. These principles have not changed. We do not live under the law given through Moses to the children of Israel, but hearing and heeding God's instructions to us in the New Testament not deviating to the left or the right, still leads to spiritual prosperity and success. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, to exert oneself, desiring God's approval, with no need to be ashamed, 
depending on our correct handling of the truth given by God. What was required of Timothy is likewise required of everybody, me and you included. Make a diligent effort to discharge the duties of a faithful child of God so as to meet divine approval. The object of living for Christ is not to please man. If any man please God, it will be as the result of deliberate intention and a careful life. This has always been the case in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 26 and 27, further reinforces it. Questions and comments are always welcome. This is Freddie Clayton, walking and talking through Proverbs. Thanks, Freddie, for that reminder. We all need to make sure that we stay on the path by avoiding those extremes, not turning to the right or to the left. Always a helpful reminder. In just a moment, we'll have our final segment, Have a Bible Question, after another brief break. If we can help you locate a Church of Christ in your area, please contact us. We'd be glad to help you out. Now we have a chance to appreciate our friends in Florida, Guyton Montgomery and Troy Spradlin. We have a Bible question for them, and it relates to John chapter 3, verse 5, and the second birth. It's a question a lot of people have, and here's their answer straight from the Bible. You know, this past weekend, Troy, we had a great time. Uh, of course, worshiped on Sunday, but uh, my wife's birthday was this weekend. Oh, wonderful. How exciting. This was the first time my boys bought her present without me and without my money. Oh, what a great day for her. What a special day. Oh, it, it really was. And and we think about birthdays, but I'm not telling you which one it was. No, don't. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, you know, there's another type of birth that the Bible speaks of. Mm -hmm. And that's where our question this week comes from. John chapter three and verse five. And they want to know that are there two births or does John three, five teach there are two births required for salvation? Well, as we say so many times on this show, the very first thing you need to do is go look at the context exactly you've got to always look at the context of a of a passage to get the answer a lot of times exactly so we'll go to john 3 just to set it kind of in its context we have jesus having performed miracles he's has john the baptist out baptizing jesus is out baptizing and in beginning of verse one it says there was a man uh, of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews the same came to jesus by night and said unto him rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from god for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So there you go. I mean, the context lets us see that even Nicodemus, this man Nicodemus was confused by this idea, this new concept, this this new thing that Jesus was teaching. And clearly we're talking about spiritual things here. Exactly. He's talking about a spiritual born, uh, birth being born of God. Yes. It, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 talks about uh, among whom also we had all our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. We actually talked about that recently mm -hmm. on one of the programs, even as God, but God who is 
rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And he talks about this being adopted as children of God in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. There you go. So when we're born again, now we're not children of wrath, but we're actually children of God. That's actually a very special birthday. Do you remember that birthday? I do remember that birthday very clearly. The day that came up out of those watery graves of baptism. Oh, wasn't it a blessing to be born spiritually, to be a part of the kingdom of God and partake of spiritual blessings? Amen. Does John 3, 5 teach to baptism? A physical and a spiritual. That's really helpful information for us. Two elements, but just one birth. That birth is of the water and the Spirit. We're baptized according to the teaching of the Spirit. That's a wonderful segment. You may want to watch that again just to make sure that you fully understand because that's often misunderstood. We always like to stay in contact with our viewers. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. We also have apps available for almost any device. If you have an Apple iPhone or an iPad, an Android phone, an Android tablet, a Kindle Fire, uh, we have apps for those. We also have a Roku channel and an Apple TV channel. In addition, we're so tickled that Truth.fm, which is uh, working with Churches of Christ, enables congregations to have their own 24-7 internet radio station. They've graciously provided a 24-7 Good News Today radio station. Now, if you're in the Churches of Christ, you can contact them for more information about how your congregation can get involved. That's truth.fm. And look us up while you're there. You can always ask us a question. Some of those questions may be answered in our Have a Bible Question segment. But even if we can't fit it into the program, we'll give you an answer. So go ahead, write us and ask. We also offer a free correspondence course. Uh, we have about 30 members of the good congregation here at Dunlap that lovingly and prayerfully work with those courses, ensuring that you get that back very quickly and can continue on in your studies. We're about to expand our studies in that area, so you'll want to stick with us and hear some exciting news later this month. As always, these correspondence courses and everything else is always free of charge. We're not trying to sell you anything. We care more about your soul than we do your pocketbook. Down those lines, we have a segment that Jim and I did recently called, What Must I Do to Be Saved? That's available on our website or on our apps. Go ahead and check it out. Our website is www.gnttv.org. Thanks for viewing. See you next week. Good news, there is good news today, all around the world. Good news, good news, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today.